Hi friends, this is Angelica. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really sweet uh, video to share with you. We're going to be working with some scrapbook.com products. Um, I'm going to start with these two dies. So I have the Hello Sunshine Word die set and then Fall Treats. I'm going to be using the donut from the Fall Treats die set. And the first thing I need to do is die cut. And I'm actually going to keep the die cutting on screen because I wanted you to see um, a new die cut machine that I got. This is the new, um, well, new in my craft room, Anna Griffin Impress die cut machine. It is electronic. And look at that magnet sheet. Now, I've been die cutting with this machine for a couple weeks. Off and on, I have been um, in and out of being sick. Can you believe that? I was still sick. Um, but I'm doing so much better now. So I sat down yesterday and just did a crazy die cutting session. Um, I put this die cut machine on my workspace and plugged it in, sat down in my chair and I die cut a lot of donuts. And you'll see that in a little bit. So I started with um, cardstock so I can make a card with cardstock donuts. I also die cut white cardstock so I can ink some donuts. And then I'm also going to make some donuts with patterned paper. I pulled a few sheets out of the birthday pattern collection. And they're, so I'm right now I'm pulling from the A2 size smaller pack. And then there is the larger size too. And the prints in both packs are the same print. Sometimes like if you get a six by six paper pad and there's the 12 by 12 paper pad that matches, the 12 by 12 is going to have a bigger print on it, but these are the same size prints. So I not only did I die cut a lot of donuts, I also die cut 10 of these You're So Sweet sentiments and then um, shadows. So the, the reason why I die cut so many is because I stacked and glued two together so there was a little bit of dimension for each card um, with these words and I die cut um, Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock which is a thicker cardstock and I ran that through my machine a lot of times and it just cut perfectly and like I said I've been die cutting with this machine off and on for the last couple of weeks and my boards have not warped at all. I do have an, another electric machine. I don't really like using that on camera because the boards warp so terribly within just, it, it, it just happens really quickly. So I am shocked and so happy that these boards for the Anna Griffin machine are holding up really nicely. I do have a video that will be coming out shortly. Um, I did a full unboxing on video and then I have a big project that I'm putting together. So once that project is done, then I will do a full video on that machine. I know that there are several reviews already or tons of reviews actually on YouTube on this machine. I highly recommend going and checking them out. Um, but until that video, we'll just get back to this one and let's talk about these donuts. So I am inking white cardstock. These are the white die cut donuts. I started with tea dye and just did a quick um, first coat with that ink and just to darken up the donut in some areas I went over with a darker ink. I started with vintage photo then I moved on to Grand Espresso for a darker color. Now we're doing the icing and for this first icing I am using dried marigold and then to darken up some of the areas just to give it that depth um, I picked Rusty Hinge so I am kind of keeping the light source like it's on the right side of the donut and just deepening up the left side, especially at the bottom of the icing and the inside of the donut. Now, if you're not familiar with Distress Oxide inks, they are a pigment ink. Um, they are so lovely to work with. They're, they have a chalky finish to them once they're dry, um, easy to blend. And because they're a pigment ink, they stay wet for a little bit. So while my die cuts are still wet, I'm going to brush them with a pigment powder. This is Perfect Pearls. It's a iridescent shimmer clear powder and it's just going to give this icing just a really pretty sheer or um, sheen to it. I do keep the pigment powder in this um, little container instead of just trying to keep it in its little jar because this is a loose powder 
and it will go everywhere if you're not careful. So I just keep it in this container and I have this brush that I got from, it was in a paint brush set that I bought years ago. And that, that brush is just dedicated to the um, pigment powder. <laughs> so I am actually going to be using three different little color combos for these icings. Um, so the first one was the orange. Now for the pink, I'm using spun sugar and picked raspberry. Picked raspberry is the darker color. And then for the blue icing, I started with salvage patina and then I'm using peacock feathers to darken up the edges. The colors did kind of just blend into each other. There's not a big contrast between those two. So I um, did do a little bit of scorched timber distress oxide ink under the blue just to darken it when I put the peacock feathers over it. To darken the, the peacock feathers, I mean, I was having a hard time really getting that peacock feather color to stand out next to the salvage patina. And I was pretty heavy handed with the salvage patina too. I don't know why. Um, I realized that once I was done, but I didn't want to redo them. So it is what it is. But if you, if you are going to do this project, I do recommend like even with the salvage patina, when you get over to the right side of the icing, just left lift up on your pressure because that's how I'm getting my radiant. I'm starting with a pretty heavy hand, a lot of pressure on the paper on the left side. And by the time I'm over on the right side, I'm barely touching the paper with the sponge. So I get that really nice highlight um, on the right side. And now I have all of the donuts done. Look, I was crazy. I went, I went all out. And these are just for three cards. I ended up doing two more cards too because I thought these were so lovely. So I am going to be putting these three um, groups of donuts on card bases. And then I'll show you the other two I did because I actually put them in an Instagram reel and put those over on my Instagram page. So I'll leave a link to my Instagram page down in the description if you want to see that. I want these donuts to have a little bit of dimension to them when I put them on the card panels. So I'm going to back them with foam adhesive. This is the one millimeter foam adhesive from scrapbook.com. I love one millimeter or thin foam, thin foam squares. I use them all the time. I just, because I have so many pieces here, instead of dealing with little squares, I just cut off um, large or long strips from this um, foam roll. And it just made, it made it really quick and easy to put the um, thin foam um, on the back of all of the donuts. Since I just spent two hours die cutting and getting these um, donuts inked and glued together, I am going to do one layout with the donuts and then the rest of the cards are going to be the same exact layout. So I started with the pattern paper donuts and I think these pattern paper donuts are so adorable. Um, I love the sprinkles paper. But once I had my arrangement, I quickly trimmed the edges, especially at the top, because I wanted to use that blue donut at the top for the bottom also. I love making my own die cut backgrounds, and that is just a um, an easy trick to do to save on making one extra, die, um, one extra donut. You can just cut that donut in half and put it on the bottom or do it on the sides too. To attach the sentiments, I'm using two millimeter foam strips and I'm making sure to only put the foam on the parts of the sentiment where the letters un will be not sitting on a donut. So uh, th this does take a couple minutes, um, but it just looks a lot cleaner when you do, when you make sure you're not having the foam touch the donuts or whatever project you're working on. So the word just lays flat. So I figured out what what part of the word would be on the card base and I added the foam adhesive and then I added a little bit of glue to the foam adhesive so I can wiggle it into, um, into place also once I had um, it on the card base. Now the last thing I'm going to do, and this is the cardstock donuts, I'm going to add Nouveau Crystal Glaze to the icing. 
and I'm going to do all of the donuts. So this does take a couple minutes, but I promise you it's so worth it. And this bottle is really easy to use. You don't have to squeeze it hard at all. Like I'm barely squeezing and then I'm using the little needle tip to push the glaze around also. And I'm just doing a nice even layer. I'm going to do that on all of the donuts. This does take a couple minutes, but I promise you it's so worth it. While I was doing this, I was wondering how does the um, crystal glaze sit on top of distress oxide inks? I haven't used crystal glaze as much as I used to in the past. So I know I've put this over oxides. I just can't remember how the oxide reacts because distress oxides do react when they get wet. Um, they just do some really funky things. It's cool, but for this project, I didn't want the oxide inks to move. So that's why I did two more cards. I really wanted to see what the glaze would look like on the oxide inks. Now with this card before the glaze dries, which it does take about an hour to dry, I'm gonna sprinkle sprinkles on top of the glaze and then just let the sprinkles um, dry onto well, when the glaze dries, it just grabs onto the sprinkles. And once the glaze is dry, I, I put this panel onto a card base and I added the sentiment just like I did with the other cards. So I'm gonna clean up my station and get that sentiment on and that's gonna finish these cards. Now, here are the two cards I did for um, my reel on Instagram. And this is cardstock versus Distress Oxide inks and I just love the Distress Oxide inks and guess what the glaze sat lovely on top of them and just gave this gorgeous shine. So that's going to finish this video. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. I will have everything that I use in this video linked down below. They are affiliate links. That's at no cost to you. I just get a small commission if you do shop my links and that really helps out my channel. So that is all that I have. I want to thank you again for stopping by. I'll be back shortly with another video. So I'll see you then. Take care, friends.